Aloha and welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure coming to you from Waikiki Beach. My wife always likes for me to start off the show uh, with the sign of the cross in Hawaiian, so we will do that. Make inoa o kamakua ke keiki a me ke ohana hemalele. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. We have with our guest a warrior, Father Richard Heilman. We've had him on our show uh, in the past. We don't usually have returning guests, but uh, it's just, just to be able to reach out to a man like this and uh, just to have talk story with him is, uh, is a powerful, powerful moment for us. So we'll be right back with Father Richard Heilman in the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Kickstart that engine and roll thunder with the pack. Explore the grittiness of manly spirituality. Gain traction in the virtues. Zoop up your spiritual engine by turning adversity into adventure. Now here's Bear Wozniak. Let's ride. Aloha, welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Why do we call it the Bear Wozniak Adventure? Because each of us has an adventure that God has in store for us. It's beautiful. God says, I know what I have in store for you. Plans for peace, not destruction. A future reserved for you, full of hope. If you seek me, I will let you find me. And then he says this, if you seek me with all your heart, I will let you find me. When he says a future reserved for you, full of hope, I, re I realize that when God taps me on the shoulder or the Holy Spirit gives me a little push <laughs> in, a, in, a, in a direction uh, that is his will, pursuing the true good, uh, I know that if I say yes to his will, that he will provide the finances, he will provide the grace, he will provide the right help at the right time, he will provide the vision, uh, and the direction at the moment that I need it. And so our quest at, at our ministry is, in my, in my personal creed, is that the most radical quest a man can pursue is to abandon himself to the wild adventure of God's will. To say to the Lord, thy will be done, is the most dangerous thing a man can do. Jesus taught his disciples that prayer when he taught them the Our, our Father. Uh, they say he taught it, taught that to him in a beautiful, tranquil place near a cave where he used to love to pray on the north shore of the Sea of Galilee. But he also prayed that prayer on the Mount of Olives, uh, right across the valley from where he would be crucified the next day. He said, nevertheless, Father, not my will, but thy will be done. So it is a very dangerous and very powerful prayer because a man who prays that prayer is dangerous. We're talking with Father Richard Heilman, a very dangerous man. Aloha, Father. Welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. It's great to be with you, Bear. I, I giggled when you said dangerous. I actually went to a pro-life gathering, and all the lefties uh, got on the Internet and said, we need to go out and protest because Father Rick Heilman is going to be there, and he's dangerous. <laughs> <laughs> and well, I pulled up in the parking lot, and I, there was a police car. I said, did you hear about... Uh, this dangerous guy, and he smiled and said, so you're the very dangerous guy. <laughs> <laughs> that is such a great story. Yeah. Uh, that's just so, it's so true, because when we bring us, we, we, we're bringing down principalities and powers. We're warring against uh, the evil in high places, and we're doing that by the power of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. And, you know, I, I'm actually, I'm going to do it. I'm, I was clowning around with our staff uh, yesterday, and I said, you know, I'm going to actually make a T-shirt with a target on my back. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. And, you know, I, I'm feeling it. But and, you know, I'm smiling. I'm not like depressed or, you know, in the fetal position or anything like that. But <laughs> it, it's it's true. I, and um, if you dare speak up nowadays, you're dangerous and inside and outside the church. And so mm. it's uh, it's tough. These are really, really challenging times, but times for war for warriors to rise up. This isn't quite the same thing, but I remember when I was developing the world tour for tandem surfing, uh, and surfers are like herding rabbits, you know. They're just really difficult. <laughs> a lot of egos involved, but beautiful people. But as I was walking, you know, but I began to feel the pain uh, because uh, when you do something new like that and, uh, on the world stage and that, you know, you get a lot of, a lot of the, the backstabbing. And I, and I was walking by this b big, beautiful catamaran on the beach in Waikiki, and, uh, and, the, and the captain of the boat came down and said, hey, uh, 
uh, how's everything going? I go, it's great. We're start having the world world title in, in here in a, in, a, in a month. And he goes, uh, um, do you know the saying that you can tell who the pioneers are because of all the arrows they have in their back? <laughs> <laughs> And yeah. it just gave me it, – it was funny, but he knew because he had done similar things. You know, He knew what it was like. Well, you take that to the world stage when you're talking about uh, uh, you know, the, whole, the whole countercultural nature of the Catholic Church. And I know, like, for example, you're heading out right after this meeting. Uh, you know, this is a recorded show, so you've probably already done this, but you're heading out to Washington, D.C., Right. And uh, it, we've been going out there every year since 2016 and calling upon the whole nation to pray with us. We call that Rosary, Rosary, Rosary Coast to Coast, the whole nation. But yes. what we're doing out there is the National Rosary Rally. It's We call it kind of the anchor for all that. But at 3 p.m. on precisely uh, October 7th, which this year happens to land on the, uh, on the first Saturday. So yes. we think that's significant. And just... I don't know, Bear. I, I I don't know if you're among those I am that just feels like things are uh, like a volcano that's rumbling and it's ready to erupt right now. I don't know what that's going to look like, um, yeah. but the, it mm-hmm. just feels like God needs to intervene. I, I I think her. I think He's placed Our Lady out for us uh, during these times, past co- couple hundred years for sure. And uh, isn't that and interesting? So, isn't that yeah. interesting that Our Lady in this time. Uh, yep. Is making these appearances, and it seems like if Our Lady's making our, those appearances, uh, John the Baptist should be coming along pretty soon, and then yeah. Jesus, well, right? I mean, we need men like you. We need the Elijah spirit of Elijah to proclaim the truth right now. Interesting. I was born on June twenty fourth, so uh, the feast, of, uh, the birthday of John the Baptist. So. There you go. Yeah, but the I'm spirit of Elijah. I'm not claiming to be a John the Baptist, but I surely love that that guy dearly. Yeah, and do believe. You know, uh, in in his way of paving the way of, for the Lord and, and and preparing souls, and I'm trying my best to do that. So, but uh, yeah, it's it's uh, it's it's interesting. So we'll we're going to be praying the glorious mysteries. First of all, wait a minute. Uh, we're going to process from St. Peter's Church to the Supreme Court. Then we join up with. The men's march. Now, now talk about and, this to the to the non-Catholic listeners. What do, what do you mean okay. by process? Oh, sure. Yeah. So um, we're going to actually take our Eucharistic Lord in what's called a monstrance, a beautiful golden vessel, and uh, I'll be wearing special vestments for that. And and we are going to process our Lord in the Holy Eucharist through the streets of Washington D.C. And we're also going to have with us the um, the Fatima statue, and uh, we're going to have relics of uh, about a dozen saints. So when the saints go marching in. Oh, uh, God. Yeah. Bob, you're, you're, I love being with you. <laughs> hey, can I tell you something about that? Uh, yeah. uh, two th- a thought comes to me. Remember, it was it Uzziah in the Old Testament when they were carrying, they, were, they weren't carrying, they were carrying the Ark of the Covenant, uh, mm-hmm. which is where, the, you know, the, the, uh, the law and Aaron's rod and the, and the, um, the manna, was there mm-hmm. and above that the angels uh, with their wings spread forward uh, the the mercy seat which is cool because the mercy seat right. sits above the law uh, but um, as they're carrying it, uh, it 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 looked like it might fall and Uzziah re- I think it was it on a cart I think it was on a cart they weren't really even carrying yeah. it like they were supposed to and he reached right. out to steady that cart and he was killed instantly yeah. Um, so this is. Let's talk about this. This presence of the Eucharist in the monstrance. We think, oh no, what are we going to do? We got to help Jesus out here. You know, we got to. You know, we get kind of panicky feeling, but the reality is, my father was a deacon. In I know this sounds like I'm taking a long journey, but I'm taking it right back to what you were saying. Okay. My dad it was a Catholic deacon in Lahaina, and he was a deacon at. And now we're going back to Mary too at a church called Maria Lanaquila Church. During this recent tragedy, when Lahaina was totally burned to the ground, I mean, metal buildings, even even buildings made out of cement, were just collapsed and gone. They're just everything's the color of gray. There's a church in the middle of that town, Maria Lanaquila, and the the, the school burnt down, but the church didn't, because I within saw that picture. yes, within that church is the Eucharist. Tell mm-hmm. to, uh, before we take this break. Uh, tell us, especially our, our non-Catholic listeners, and remind our Catholic listeners, why the Eucharist isn't a symbol of hope, but it's hope, it's himself. 
Right. It's the body, blood, soul, and divinity. What an like amazing I'm, gift we've been given. You know, this is my body, this is my blood. And, uh, and, and you know, that's John 6, chapter 6, the Bread of Life Discourse. And I always think, too, Bear, that in verse 66, many of his disciples left him that day. And that's yeah. verse 666. And yes. uh, the division that we've had over believing or not believing it, that this is our Eucharistic Lord is sad. And, and uh, but it happened right there in front of Jesus's face. And oh. he turned to his, the first pope and said, are you going to leave me too? Turned Where are we going to gonna go? You have the words of eternal life. Yeah. You know, so it, it just, we've, 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 and this is the way I've been framing it lately, too, because I'm using an expression. I actually have a T-shirt I made um, for myself. I didn't make it for anybody else. But it has the big word, unite. And then at the bottom, it says, to, on, uh, at the foot of the cross. But yes. uh, recently, um, we were gathered out in front of Planned well, Parenthood. Well, let, 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 let me let you know. Okay, yeah, I want to tell this story. We're going to be right back. back. I don't want you to rush through it. We're talking sure. with our, our friend, Father Richard Ma Heilman. He's written so many great books. The one that we uh, recommend to all of the men in our man cave is the Field Manual, Special Forces Training for the Life in Christ. We'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak adventure. Now you can journey with other men on the adventure of a lifetime, growing in manly virtue through Bear's man cave community in our three-year school of manliness. Join at deepadventure.com. Better yet, you can lead your own sons through the same compelling video, audio, and written content. Can you imagine how much deeper your relationship with your dad could have been and how much more you could have learned and pitfalls you might have avoided if your dad had a tool like this to help to draw you both into a deeper, life-changing discussion? Now you have a trigger that you can pull that will take you into gritty discussions with other men and with your sons at deepadventure.com. Deep Adventure Ministries is grateful to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for underwriting the Bear Wozniak Adventure on EWTN. Notre Dame Federal Credit Union provides car loans, mortgages, SBA loans, and depository accounts nationwide, as well as 24-hour support. Go to deepadventure.com to find their link or go to notredamefcu.com. Mahalo to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for making the Bear Wozniak adventure possible. You can gain traction in the virtues in my book, Deep Adventure, The Way of Heroic Virtue. And you can be inspired by my personal testimony of heartache and triumph with my book, A Surfing Guide to the Soul, both newly published by Sophia and available at our web store, deepadventure.com and also on Amazon.com. This is a warning. The Bear Wozniak Adventure is dangerous. The radical change Bear challenges you to is not for wimps. Change this station now to a soft rock station before it's too late. You've been warned. Now, here is Bear Wozniak. Aloha. Welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I am really stoked because I have Father Richard Heilman with us. And Father Richard, I got to tell you, I got to give a little promo for myself because uh, Sophia Publishing is telling me I got to do it. Everyone is telling me I got to do it, and that, and I like doing it anyway. I, I have a new book out. It's called 12 Rules for Manliness. Where have all the cowboys? I saw that. Yeah, where have all the, where are all the cowboys? Yeah, where have all the cowboys gone? That, and, I saw that. I can't <laughs> wait to get it. Yeah, it. Well, it's a really cool book, and it goes through the goes through 12 rules. There's probably more, but uh, it really is. It, it. You know what it is? It's grit and grace. You know, and it yep. talks about it's real like a man to man conversation. Some parts of it women may not want to listen to or may not even fully understand. But that's why women love the book, right? Because it gives them a peek behind the curtain, you know. But but it's yep. like a father to a son or a brother to a brother and we and we get real and we get gritty with gritty in the book and it and and everyone that's reading it says that it's a, it's it's a life changing book and and, it, and it's like you and, and Doug Barry you know wherever you guys are together your show 
Um, Grace Force and your books are, are the same way. So invite everybody, go to, go to Amazon.com, pick up Father Richard Heilman's, one of his books, the one we like the most is uh, Special Forces, and get a copy of 12 Rules for Manliness. Uh, ladies, our mama bears out there, you're not doing your job if you don't send a copy of these books to all the men in your life. <laughs> I, should, for, for I shouldn't say that. For people doing a search, it, the full title is Church Militant Field Manual, and then subtitled, Special Forces Training for the Life in Christ. Yeah, and you have other other books there, too, and they all have this same sort of military. It's grit and grace. I love that expression. Yeah, yeah, it's great. Yeah. You need both. Grit can't do it. You can't. You got to be tough, but you just can't. But being tough alone doesn't you do it. You can't do know? it without the power of God. Yeah, you know? amen. Hey, you know what? Yeah. You're, you're, this guy's a tough guy, but he lights up. So tell us about, first, you're I wanted you're to tell, tell you about, about the, yeah. the whole uniting, and you know, you let it in by saying, you know, what what is it about the Eucharist, and to, especially our Protestant brothers and sisters, but um, uh, and that helped me remember that just last week, we gathered for the beginning of 40 Days for Life, and the bishop was there with us, too. And we had a, a beautiful uh, gathering out there. Is this and, in Madison? Uh, the, Is this in Wisconsin? Yeah, Madison, Wisconsin. Yeah. And, and, and protesters came, and they've come in the past, you know, and they were forming down the street. And I'm going, good, they're down the street. But then as we were starting, they, pro they, they processed toward us, but they got the megaphones out and the most vile and uh just vulgarities and mocking us for believing in god i mean I, we've all we all said this we've been out in front of planned parenthood for 40 years or whatever whatever it's been and we've never seen anything like this the bishop said that too he'd never seen anything like this but we had set up a pickup truck and they were standing right next to it it was right there across the street and we were going to use it like as a stage with speakers mm. and our one of our leaders said well we should go over there and you know shout them down and 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 both Bishop and myself said, no, 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 that'll only incite us. And then Bishop said, huddle up. And that took mm. me back to all day. I love that. Dude. Yeah, yeah, you, you know? played. Yeah, we got, we yeah we talked about that. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So huddle it up. He says, and we got close in, and you know, over our shoulder is coming this vile vulgarity, you know, all this stuff, this demonic stuff. But we were in there and we're praying um, the glorious mysteries of the Rosary. And um, and it was just so peaceful amidst mm. that assault and that attack, mm. and, and it made me think again about how that's what we do, Bear. Mm. That's what we do. And I preached on it this past weekend, and I and I said, "Huddle up, we got to huddle up." And and then I brought back that expression. I like unite at the foot of the cross, and I look back, and we have these enormous cr crosses in the two churches I preached at this weekend. And yes. what's at the foot of the cross? The Blessed Sacrament, mm -hmm. the tabernacle. Mm -hmm. United and that's, the, where we're, mm -hmm. that's where we're uniting. And mm -hmm. that's really what the Eucharist is meant to be. It's a, it's a place where we come together. We get as well connected as we possibly can get be to Christ, but then to each other as a family. We're a mm -hmm. family. Mm -hmm. And it's and, the Eucharist um, that... It's the Eucharist that does two things. It's the, the dividing point and it's the uniting point. Yep. And well, you know, I grew up by uh, my grandmother, and then my mom took over after my grandmother uh, got older. But they always had the Sunday dinner, yeah, know, and uh. got the whole family together. Bear, that's what we're doing, you know. And I don't want to, I don't want to, you know, lessen the the, the gl glory and the majesty of what happens in the Holy Eucharist. But we are a family, yes. you know. We're God's children, and we're get, we're getting together for. It's Sunday dinner, but it's the Son of God mm. that we're uh, consuming, and and hopefully too we prepared well for that dinner. We went to confession, we got our our soul right, so it's a it's a fitting dwelling place for the Lord. Anyway, so yeah, that and so that's what the Eucharist is as we bring it down the streets of Washington D.C. is it's a uniting point, and it and it's saying here, you know, this is the truth, you know, and the truth will set us free. You know, we're 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 slaves right now, aren't we, Bear? What's Isn't, going on in the culture? And well, oh, if we let ourselves, if we let ourselves be, yes. You know, I'll, I'll yes. say this. I'll say this lately. <laughs> I hear men complaining. Oh, they've relegated us. There, there's attack against us. There's uh, you know, they make fun of us. Uh, you know, we we they've they're taking away our roles. They're even taking away agenda. That all sounds to me like a very weak victim. Yeah. You know, we exactly. <clears throat> it happens because we let it happen. Oh, the we women are taking over the church. Uh, but you personally, young man, you personally, gentlemen out there, that's not you. You <clears throat> you hold your ground. 
and you take new. Oh no! Here I thought you were calling me a young man. Yeah. Yes. You okay, men, good. you're out there. Everyone has always <laughs> said, Father Richard, he's really out there. So, <laughs> but it's true. We don't. It, we're we are we. Jesus is a dangerous man because he yeah. invaded. It's an invasion. Yeah. You know, we're, the, thy kingdom come. That sounds like an invasion yeah. of someone else's turf. And so, of course, you know, people tell me, hey, when you're out, when you're out, when you're out filming Long Ride Home, did you guys ever come under spiritual attack? And I go, never, not even once. What? No, because I'm on the attack. We're on the attack. We may face resistance, like those the, the knuckle draggers that were trying to shout you down. You're on the attack and you're facing resistance. But Jesus, the Bible calls, the, calls Satan the great dragon. In another place, it calls him, I love this, the fleeing dragon. Because mm. he's already been defeated. Oh, my wife's bringing me some water. Thank you, honey. Uh, the fleeing dragon. You know, he's been defeated. And we just get to be part of that army. But you know what? It's a very weak thing, don't you think? When, you know, I mean. You've got to be when, careful. I, I know exactly what you're yeah, saying there, but yeah. we've got to be careful because, and here's an expression I, I always yeah. use, if we say he's defeated, then we can go shopping and golfing. You know what I mean? Oh, I, yeah, and, I, yeah. Yeah. Fix that for yeah. me. No, yeah. we're, we're, we're called upon. This is, this is our time. We yeah. were born at this moment in history. What are we going to do about it? And, 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 and again, the compulsion was to shout back at those protesters, but we didn't. We, and we were, there were TV cameras there, and I hope they captured this too. But the, just this, this, this uh, image of such utter peace mm. and this other image right across the street of vile, diabolical rage. Of Moloch and Baal, right? I mean, it's, yeah. it's satanic. Yeah, yeah. And so, um, and you know what re helps me recall, too, you, you talk about we're, we're going to be processing our Lord through the streets of Washington, D.C. Do you remember the Summer of Love? Yeah, yeah, I do. Yeah. That's, yeah, that's all when all, hell, bro all and, hell broke loose, yeah. All hell broke loose. Well, mm -hmm. you know what we decided to do in Madison, Wisconsin? We, did, we decided to do exactly what we did in Washington, we're doing in Washington, D.C. We, we got people together and... Uh, and everybody was afraid to go outside, if you remember, at that time, you know? Yeah, and yeah. all the stores were boarded up, and all the vulgarity on the spray paint on the on the board, boards and on the stores were there. And we took our Lord, and I think about 3,000 people showed up there. Mm. It was unbelievable. And we processed our Lord down State Street in Madison up to the state capitol. And it was shocking to me, the response there, because they were there were onlookers on the side, literally crying, oh, sobbing, mm, mm. because they were so touched by the Prince of Peace coming by them. And it was such a sign of hope in their dire fear that they were in right right then. That's what the tears were all about at that time. I, you know, thank I, I, you, thank you, thank you for bringing this peace. Yes. Go, yeah. yes. Go ahead. Uh, well, a couple of things. Well, first, I have seen video from, oh, maybe 10 years ago, a flash mob. You remember the flash mob thing? Yep. Where suddenly it happens here in Waikiki. Everybody's just relaxing, and suddenly, and people are kind of there gathering at the beach, and suddenly someone turns on music, and 100 people stand up and start dancing, you know? Yep. Well, yep. I, saw, I saw these videos of these priests uh, walking, down the middle of, walking down the street with the monstrance, and suddenly flash mob. You know, when they raised the monstrance, everybody just, so many people just knelt right below them, right there, wherever they were standing. It wasn't yes. a planned thing. It just happened. You know, yeah. when you, when you, well, you know, women will tell me, don't you love those women when you go into church that are there 20 minutes early and they're, and they're praying the rosary and they're by themselves usually. That was my mom. Yeah. Well, and like, my grandmother. My my, but, you know, you look at and that. My maybe women will ask me, what can I do? I got I to gotta reach my husband. I got to reach my son. What can I do? I mean, I pray the rosary, but what can I do? It's like they're miss. It's like that is it. Yep. <laughs> you're doing you're doing the work uh, by by picking up your weapon and praying. You know, that and, is and I want to make a, I want to make a connection here, too, because. We're told, what, what can I do? Well, go to church and receive Jesus. Okay, okay, I'll, I'll do that. But what's that going to make me do? Now, we're talking about moms. We're talking about mm -hmm. the women praying the rosary. We're talking about my mother, my grandmother, who did what? Who worked diligently to build a family and not just in their own homes. Mm -hmm. When I grew up, my parish was such an awesome family. Mm. I mean, we knew everybody and we got together and we worked on stuff. Mm. So listeners, please, 
here's what you do. Build family wherever you are. Let the Holy Eucharist ignite a fire in you so that you draw people, unite again, unite at the foot of the cross, but as what? As a family. Mm. You'll get to know each other, take care of each other, you know, work together with each other. Um, you know, it, it, that's what that's what it's all about. That's, in, in essence, what we're called to do. You know, um, there's a, I was talking to my wife the other day, there's this, this illustration, you know, they say, well, for, um, we, we're, we're talking about inviting couples to go sailing with us on this, this boat, uh, just, just to come and just have a private retreat on, on this sailboat. We're thinking about doing that. And she said, well, we're not going to do marriage retreats, aren't we? And I go, no, I don't think I want to do that. <laughs> I don't have that call. But I did say, you know, if we invite people on the boat and they, have a fa- they, they, they themselves have a personal retreat, the couple has a personal retreat uh, and gets closer to Jesus, if you put three dots on a piece of paper, uh, the one at the top being Jesus and the two at the bottom, as those two get closer to Jesus, they get closer to each other too. And that's what you're saying, yeah. unite. If we focus on Jesus, um, well, and Jesus said, don't think that I've come. Oh, we got to take a break. We're talking with Father Richard Heilman. It's already time. Right. We'll be right back with more, and we're going to talk more about his book, The Field Manual, uh, Field Manual, Special Forces. Can't read it because it's so dark. Special Forces Training for the Life in, in Christ. In Christ. <laughs> Good, that <laughs> emphasizes him. Okay, we'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak Adventure. This is Dan Boom Markham with another episode of Country Up, Baked Beans. Baked beans, like a lot of things, aren't what they're made out to be. Because baked beans aren't baked. They're stewed. Sort of like a 10-gallon hat. It's a gallon. Things like wealth, lovers, and alcohol aren't what they're cut out to be. Often lead down the road to the city of disappointment, even destruction. Some folks have found Jesus and church to be disappointing. Now, nigh on 50 years of ministry, I've learned a fair number of such folk are mostly those who came to Jesus under false conditions. The biggest false condition is no condition at all. Yep, that's right. Just give your heart to Jesus and everything will be rosy. Now, hold on there, partner. It's not like that for a long shot. Too many people continue coming to Jesus and church for what they can get rather than what they should give. Sure, give them your heart, but also your will, your obedience, your sweat and tears, and even blood if so called upon. Stand for something, brother, sister. He did say, come unto me, all you who labor and are heavy burden, and I'll give you rest. That's good. Don't stop there. He went on to say, pick up your cross and follow me. Yep, we each got one cross, that is. If we're a true to heart and action follower of the Lord Jesus, cross carrying can be a mite painful even deadly at times. Some folks quit because the going gets tough. To which Jesus added, he who endures to the end will be saved. And enduring takes some doing. This is Daniel the Boone Markham at countryup.org on a journey a few miles this side of heaven. We invite our mama bears to join with us at deepadventure.com. You'll have access to all of the Long Ride Home TV shows even before they air on EWTN. Plus, three years of the shareable Ocean Sunrise daily catechism videos. Plus, at deepadventure.com, a 20% discount at our online store with all of our great t-shirts and clothes and books and rosaries and medals and all kinds of accessories. You'll also get an autographed copy of Bear's latest book, and for a limited time, a Catholic biker stuffed teddy bear. All at deepadventure.com. Come on, Mama Bears, let's hear you roar. Did you know that each Saturday morning you can receive the shareable YouTube video version of the Bear Wozniak Adventure in our inspiring weekly newsletter, even before it airs on the radio or hits the podcast apps? Never miss another episode. You can even binge watch Bear's inspiring guests. Think about the impact you can have sharing these videos with your friends. Go to deepadventure.com and click the subscribe button. Be the kind of man that when he gets out of bed in the morning, the devil says, oh no, he's up. 
Go to deepadventure.com and invite Bear to speak. Aloha. Welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. We want to invite you to go to our our uh, YouTube channel, the Bear Wozniak Deep Adventure YouTube channel. So many things are going on there. Uh, we have the entire catechism where I, for, I spent two and a half years teaching for about 10 to 15 minutes every morning. And uh, usually I was down at the beach going through line by line of the catechism, kind of a refreshing sort of view of the catechism. Uh, and and you, we also have all of our radio, we have about 500 of our radio shows, uh, the video version of it up on our YouTube channel. And then we have these cool things called uh, Adventures in Paradise, where Cindy and I just talk story from time to time on our living here in Hawaii or when we're sailing. Uh, and so go go to go and become a member. We have these these new these new videos we're doing right now called I guess they call them YouTube Shorts, uh, based on my new book Twelve Rules for Manliness. Where have all the cowboys gone? My wife's a cowgirl. I'm just a surfer. But we, I, I, she's got me all duded up wearing cowboy clothes, and I sit and I, nice. I read from some of the some of the book, and we talk story about some of that new book. So go to the YouTube channel and please subscribe, and you can even become a member. And if you'd like to, you can even uh, give us a gift right there on the site. We're talking with Father Richard Heilman, and then talking about his book, the uh, Church Militant Church Field Militant. Manual, Special Forces Training Force. for the Life in Force. Christ. Did I get it right? Yep. Okay, so <laughs> we're we're talking about. The Eucharist and the power of prayer, uh, in 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 the bat in in our in the, the the cultural battle that we're facing, uh, you know people will people will tell me, oh, uh, this all these things are going on. You know the cult, the the cancel culture is doing this. The what do they call it? The they have all kinds of conspir- conspiracy things to tell me about it. Maybe they're true. I don't know, but uh, but they go into all these things and all these things, and I go, well, you're. You're really dwelling on a lot of bad things, but what good is all that? What are you, what, what are you telling me? What should I do? Well, you just need to know what's going on. Um, and, and I'm not saying it very well, but there's kind of this way of this inward downward spiral of focusing right. on problems. And the, but the, instead of doing that, yes, we know there's this conspiracy. A third of the angels were kicked out of heaven. You know, there's a, yep. there's a, there's a battle going on in, uh, in, the, in the spiritual and in the natural realm. But what should our response be to that? Just to get more worried? Yeah, or, you, yeah go ahead. Yeah, you, well, you hope that when fe- people face crisis, that that somehow provokes a, an awakening. Because again, and that's an expression that I use all the time, otherwise we go shopping and golfing. And we get back into our worldly lives, we get locked into it, um, the a, a recent gospel passage was Jesus says, follow me. Well, can I go bury my father? And can mm. I go say goodbye? You know, but what, but, it, and it's a little bit, I think it's hyperbole there. You know, you're going to bury your father, but, but we find every reason in the world to not do the missions that God is calling us to do. And they're all, and they're oftentimes noble reasons, you know, why we can't do the missions of Jesus. Well, I got to feed my family. Well, I got to, we can find mm. anything we want. And um, it, and it, so it, we got to go shopping because we got to put food on the table. And you know, I got to need some relaxation time golfing. And I'm all for relaxation time. I'm just kind of using it as an example. But but the point is is that is that that's where we're at right now. That's why we're weak, and that's why we're getting defeated. We won't be defeated ultimately, but we are losing right now. Okay, and uh, the the devil just is laughing at us. Well, that huge mob that showed up, like never we've never seen before at Planned Parenthood, they just feel emboldened right now. This is our time, you know. You you sit down, or you know, and then and then you'll get canceled, you know, mm-hmm. and again by inside or outside the church, because you know you're dangerous, and we're in control now. All of that is going on <clears throat> bare right now because we're shopping and golfing in essence, mm-hmm. because we got other things to do. And, mm-hmm. and so the crisis, and I think God allows these at times. You remember 9-11? You know, mm-hmm. at least for a time, the churches were jammed. Mm-hmm. You know, um, we faced a crisis together. And, and what did we do? We fell to our knees and we wanted to get closer to God. And we called mm-hmm. upon God for his help. You know, I think sometimes that's what why God does allow things like this. And so that's what I'm, and so, so all that said, I'm hopeful. I'm hopeful. I'm not giving up on humankind. 
But I'm telling you right now, we are locked into the gods of our comfort right now, mm. and and uh, and we it's it's hard to break from. Follow me, as Jesus is saying. Well, no, wait a minute. I gotta he, he, I gotta watch this TV show, and I gotta play this video game. I gotta you know, whatever. Uh, so so I'm know, hoping he, we get an awakening. You know, in my in my book, I talk about this. Abraham Lincoln was asked what asked uh, what you know was asking about a general to see it was this someone that I, I should promote. And they said, oh, you should see when adversity comes, this man is, is tough as nails. He goes, well, tell me what he's like when there is an adversity. Because mm. most of society today, whether we like to complain about, oh, life is so hard, taxes are so hard. No, you've got it easier than anyone has ever had it in the history of mankind. Even the poorest person is a wealthy, wealthier than anyone, just about anybody in the past. What do you do in a time of ease? But that's that's at risk right now. There's a lot of things going on. But I mean, but, at but, all at risk. But pe- but people who are relative, you know, they 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 have time on their hands, so they're they're playing computer games, pornography, right. like you say, golfing. We have it relatively easy right now. But you know, yep. uh, but then suddenly, suddenly, uh, there's a problem. It's like someone training in martial arts. You know, uh, uh, why are you training in martial arts? You probably never need it. Well, hopefully not. But are we yeah. prepared in the day that that comes? So how do we prepare? Yeah. What's our spiritual and, uh, life? I, yeah, and uh, we're on the Feast of St. Francis of Assisi when we're recording right now. And I actually, one of my favorite teachings that is drawn from St. Francis of Assisi, if you notice, the, the I call them monks. They prefer to be called uh, friars, but monk is just short for monastic. But anyways, they wear the brown robe, right? And then they have this rope around their waist with three knots hanging down. And I think it's one of the most powerful teachings of how to be prepared. Mm. And 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 uh, so to to such an extent where I don't think I'm going to go, you know, over to the grocery store with a rope around my waist, you know, and knots hanging down. But you know, I made one, and I've actually made it in military green. I have a. Uh, I have the. You got one? Well, I have the the ancient Greek fathers, the rope prayer, the, oh, nice. the Jesus prayer. Yeah. But this on is my wrist. this is a yeah. this is a rope with three knots on it, and wow. the three knots on the friars, the monks' uh, rope, represent what's called the evangelical councils or the councils of perfection, and um, and and that is drawn from the teachings of of Saint Francis, uh, because obviously the friars are are reading it, are are wearing it. But um, let, let me just tell you that uh, I wrote a little bit about it, and here's what I said. There are actually three wounds that ravage souls and bring spiritual death to them by turning away from God. Actually, this is a clip from my book, The Field, Church Milton Field Manual. St. John speaks of these evils when he says, For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, which is craving sexual gratification, sensual gratification, the lust of the eye, greeting longings for the, of the mind, and the pride of life, assurances in one's own resources or in uh, the stability of earthly things, these do not come from the Father, but are from the world itself. This is a triple slavery, which replaces the original harmony, and it is order overthrown. And Christ came to restore that order and then brought through St. Francis and the Franciscans and all that, these beautiful teachings of the the the, um, the counter to these uh, three wounds, you know, lust of the eyes, lust of the, the um, uh, what was it? Lust, lust, lust of, of the, the flesh, lust of the eye, flesh. pride of life. That was yeah. it, flesh yeah. and then the pride of life. So the first one, real quick, is poverty. So that's the first knot, right, on the, on the rope that they wear and what I'm wearing around our wrist. But it doesn't mean that we have to do what St. Francis did and just you know, give away all our stuff. It just means that the stuff can't have us, okay? Mm. And it's just what we got done saying before, too. We're so addicted to our stuff that that uh, that it becomes our gods, and it has priority over God, okay, in our lives. So I'll get I'll get to God when I get around to it. And, you know, I go to church on Sunday. I punch the clock. I put my finger in the holy water font when I come in and put it when I come out. You know, so you're kind of going through the motions. Um, but no, it's it's a readiness to just be de- it's being detached from all the stuff. Again, you can have it, but it can't have you. <clears throat> and then chastity is obviously, and especially in our times, right, with the cell phone and pornography and everything. I mean, the the accessibility of of that, and and it's become almost normalized to cheat on your wife or have sex before marriage or 
Um, it, it, it's just, it's, it's pandemic right now. And we're called to be pure. And we're called to be, be true to, to whatever state in life we're in. That's chastity. And then the other one, the last one is obedience. And it's the, probably the big one. That counters pride of life. And it's just a commitment to listen to God, to meditation on scripture and the teachings of the ch church. That's divine revelation. And, and I just had, we just had this scripture passage. This was on the Feast of St. Francis, where he said, come to me, all you are weary and find life burdensome, and, and you'll find rest for your souls. Rest? What are you talking about? You're, you're, you're dying on a cross. You want us to pick up our cross. Well, no, when you love the one you're serving, the one you're obeying, it's easy. Yes. It really is. Yes. yes. Because of course I want to please you. Of course, I, you know, I, I, I love you so much. What do you want me to do? I, I'll do it. You know, and mm. that's what he meant, <clears throat> what he meant by that. For my yoke is easy and my burden light, he said. Really? Well, yeah, if you don't love the person and you're made to do it and you're trying to bring home a paycheck yeah. and you hate your job, that, that's different than you're totally in love like your spouse, you know. You're or totally your, love or your, or Whatever child, I can do yeah. for you, I can't wait to do it. I love doing things for you. Yes. Right? Yes. We're talking with Father Richard Heilman, uh, his book, uh, the Church Militant Field Manual. You got to tell me the small print. I can't read it. My the printer came out. So oh, much. special Such forces, forces. training for the life in Christ. We'll be right back with more of Father Richard Heilman. I actually Heilman. have a big book here. <laughs> oh, you're cheating. No, I love those. Yeah, books. I'm cheating. Yeah. We'll be right back. <laughs> People love our EWTN TV show, Long Ride Home with Bear Wozniak. Thanks to you, the show has won four different Tally Awards. And now, instead of waiting each week for the next episode to air. You can actually binge watch our show and even share it with your friends when you go to deepadventure.com and join the Mama Bears or the Man Cave. Along with all the other benefits, you get total access to all the seasons of our aired episodes, plus instant access to episodes that won't even air for several months. Long Ride Home with Bear Wastick, a great way to communicate the gospel in a gritty enough way that even tough men will stop and watch at deepadventure.com. Deep Adventure Ministries is grateful to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for underwriting the Bear Wozniak Adventure on EWTN. Notre Dame Federal Credit Union provides car loans, mortgages, SBA loans, and depository accounts nationwide, as well as 24-hour support. Go to deepadventure.com to find their link or go to notredamefcu.com. Mahalo to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for making the Bear Wozniak adventure possible. When you go to the Bear Wozniak Deep Adventure YouTube channel, you get access to all of our free playlists, including hundreds of episodes of the Bear Wozniak adventure, plus the three-year journey through the whole catechism in our Ocean Sunrise Catechism series. And you even get short clips and live streaming of Baron Cindy's Adventures in Paradise videos. Go to YouTube and subscribe to the Bear Wozniak Deep Adventure channel. Are you still listening? I thought we warned you to change to an easy listening station. Well, you asked for it. Here is more of the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Aloha, welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. We want to remind you, the new series, uh, Long Ride Home uh, with Bear Wozniak, the Motorcycle Immersive Reality Show, award-winning show, by the way. It's won several tally awards. We've just released season four. It'll probably be our final season uh, to EWTN. It's all filmed, 11 episodes filmed in Hawaii. Uh, you, can, uh, you can get access to all 33 episodes, all four seasons, when the mama bears join or the, or the men join the man cave at deepadventure.com. So we invite you to go there and, and uh, check it out. And uh, we're, the, new, the new season should be coming up too on uh, Prime Video soon. They just seem to take their time getting, getting things launched. But we're talking with Father Richard Heilman and his bear, his book, <laughs> uh, Church Militant Field Manual, Special Forces training for the life in christ here, here's the big there it print. is <laughs> yeah i love that we, and there's a smaller version one and we have that available on our website yeah. if people want to get it or they can get it go to go to amazon.com and get it so yeah. so the thing the thing it goes back to this is that um our 
we can get caught up in work and we can get caught up in leisure. Uh, but God, God wants us to, um, to, uh, to devote that time to him. And you think about the liturgy of the word, the liturgy of the hour. It all means work. Yep. You know, to the work of the people is what that literally means. And yep. Jesus said, the Father and I, even now we work. And when he was young, and they, he, they, they say he was lost in the temple, he wasn't lost. He said, didn't you know I'd be, about, I'd be in my father's house or I'd be about my father's business? Uh, uh, God has work for us. How do people discern uh, what it is God is calling them to in, in, this, in this season? You talked about how it seems like a volcano is about to erupt. And we need, we need to, uh, how, how, what, how do people discern, what can I do, Lord? What, you know, I always, send me, Lord. I always, yep, I always go back to that uh, amazing scene where Jesus is in the living room of Martha and Mary. The Son of God, the second person of the Holy Trinity, is in the living room of Martha and Mary. And Martha is, oh, a, a special guest is here. We've got to work on the, the hospitality, which is what you do. Yeah, it's a noble thing to do, mm. you know. And and uh, what does Mary do? She just stops. She throws herself at the feet of Jesus. She gets as close as she appropriately can, and she locks eye to eye with him. And she hangs on his every word. She's in adoration, right? Mm. I, I like to say she's <clears throat> marinating. You know, she's <laughs> soaking in everything that Jesus wants to give her. You know, we need that time and then martha's like oh tell her to help me and martha martha you're anxious and upset about many things mary has chosen the unum necessarium the one thing necessary and that is to get as close as we can possibly get to our lord and then when you have that kind of connection and fall that deeply in love mm. then he's going to say follow me and you're going to say I i'm there and you're going to jump and what he's going to ask you to do something you're going to jump and you're not going to do it because it's work drudgery it's work joy this is awesome yes Let's do it. because right? we work you know work is a blessing uh yeah even in heaven when I you're in love. have work yes yes yeah. when you're yeah. in love when you're you know my for my wife i look for ways to to take care of her to please her exactly and, and she does to for me and with a child yeah, she just got your water <laughs> yeah, you're right, and, and and sparkling water. She knew I needed that when I'm doing, oh, my, doing my shows. Yeah, oh, nice. Yeah, and she's a cowgirl, and you she's a cowgirl. That's right. Yeah, you hit yeah. the lottery, my yeah, friend. Yeah, oh, I did. Yeah, and she's my tandem. Yeah. We met on a tandem surfboard, you know. Nice. I, I lift her when we surf. Yeah, but but that's oh, nice. it. That's it. There's nothing. My getting up at four in the morning to work to provide for us is 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 nothing but Utter joy. joy. Yeah. Joy. yeah. And so and yeah. so so as you so the beautiful thing about that too is you know we were we were riding our motorcycles uh in season 1 of Long Ride Home and we had Grady Dyke uh constantly I don't know why but I said hey Grady Dyke whenever we interview you at some point put your finger up into the sky and just say one thing and from taking it from Slim I think it was Slim who said that in the uh uh what was that the old the old TV show where all the guys go run with the bulls I forget the city slickers, and I said just okay. just imitate Slim and just put your finger up in there and just say one thing. So through the whole show, we were saying one thing. He keeps saying that whenever we talk to him, and I still don't know why. But then Tony and I, we left the pack. We had ridden from Florida to the middle of Texas. They all went back. Tony and I kept riding. And we go through to Arizona. I don't know if you've ever seen, but there's about 400 miles of signs that say the thing is 100 is 400 miles away. The thing is 222 miles away, oh and there's goodness. there's this little place. A little gas station with kind of a souvenir shop, and it's called the Thing. And so Tony <laughs> points to the sign. He goes, "Maybe that's what Grady was talking about." We go running <laughs> in, and uh, the thing is, is you, you you run through all the you go through all these weird museum things that they found in Arizona desert and weird stuff, and you go okay. all the way to the back, and then in there, way 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 back, there is this this thing they call the Thing, and I can't tell you what it is, but but then I asked Father Mark Goring to send us a video about the one thing. And it is. It was that quote. There is only one thing necessary. You know, it's it's that's not. Right. You know, it's it's the one thing. And that that's why I go back to this. The liturgy, of the hour, is our most essential work. The liturgy of the mass, is our most essential work. It's it means liter. It, actually, yeah. liturgy meant like public works in Latin. It was like you're going to build a building for the public. You know, a library or something. So, our most. When my dad became older and feeble, and he could no longer preach homilies. You know, as a deacon. 
I said, Dad, you're doing your most important work. I said, how often do you sit and pray and read? All the time. He yeah. was ministering to the Lord. Yep. That's our most important work first. Yeah, and, and it made him the special, uh, loving warrior that, that he was. He know, became because like... Because mm-hmm. that energy in him that needed to burst out into action, whatever that... Whatever. Yeah, he was... Well, he, you know what his action was? It reminded yeah. me so much of the, of the Apostle John, uh, the beloved. He would just say, children love one another. As my dad, this tough, gnarly six foot four dude, when he as he got older, when he would go to mass, he would just give out holy cards to the children and just say, "You're beautiful. God made you the way you did." You know, go ahead, tell me. That's John the Beloved. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's the Beloved. Very oh right. Too. Oh, oh, okay. That's the statue right there. Oh, it is. Yep. Oh, how beautiful. Yeah. Um, I actually was given that during COVID because I was referring to John the Beloved mm. because I just felt like we were reenacting the scene where. Uh, uh, ten of the disciples abandoned him. One, one of them betrayed him, and, but right. one stayed where united at the foot of the cross. And uh, I just felt like when we closed everything down and everything, we were not uniting at the foot of the cross. <laughs> I wasn't feeling good about that. You know, it was like they and all. Most of the Christians said, "Well, we can worship in our home. We can worship, you know, out surfing. We can." Right. But Catholics, we long for the Eucharist. Right. That's yep. different it's, for Catholics. Yep. We need to be yep. with our priest and be together. And again, it gets back to the unum necessarium. It's it's she's choosing the one thing necessary. That's really what the mass is. That you're coming and you're getting as close as you can possibly get. Wait a minute, you're actually ingesting the Son of God in, inside of you. I mean, that's what a, what an amazing gift we have been given. And then and then to be then I I I no longer. And me, I'm Christ for the world, you know. So anyway, it's it's, it's beautiful, uh, Father. It's like yeah. you know, every athlete knows. I know you're an you're an athlete. Every athlete knows you are what you eat. Yep. And you know, my wife said something so beautiful. We're reading Genesis, and the, and the Bible says, "Thou shalt not eat of the fruit of this tree." But then he said, she said, then in in the and Jesus said, "You must eat. You must unless you re, yep. unless you know unless you eat of my body and drink of my." blood you can have no life in you so it went from yeah. you shall not eat till you to you must eat <clears throat> you must receive the eucharist i wanted to read something real quick that pope benedict said and it's right at the beginning of my book he says we are facing a profound crisis of faith a loss of the religious sense that constitutes the greatest challenge to the church today the renewal of faith must therefore take priority in the commitment of the entire church in our time and i know you're committed to that bear i am too but uh i I, but i believe the 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 place where we unite is at the foot of the cross and that's where the tabernacle is right Mm -hmm. remember that there's a beautiful crucifix in virtually every church and Mm -hmm. and we're uniting right there at the foot of the cross uh to become not only united but ignited ignited in the fire of the Holy Spirit and so that we can be sent out you know and and light up this world from that point and um, well so, said yeah and, and and I just I want to say this too real quick is that I am a fervent believer that we need to recover revive whatever you want to call it the sense of the sacred in the mm. Holy Sacrifice of the Mass where mere mortals bear and so when I go into it, I was just in one this morning, um, St. Nativia Mary in Janesville, you walk into this church and your heart just starts pounding. I mean, the, the sacred beauty of that old church, I, I, it's late 1800s, I don't know when it was built, but the, in the stained glass windows and the arches, uh, it, and what do, you, what do you do then? You walk in and you go, God's here, mm. God's here. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, you're just overwhelmed, and, and that's the architecture and art, but you know the music but the sacred it's not, offering it, it, of the it's, mass the sacred offering of the mass and that's what's going to open people up to be mary at the feet of jesus adoring him mm. right we've yeah. been talking with father richard heilman we got to we got to we got to head out uh father richard is heading to get a, catch a plane to go to dc uh, yeah. uh 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 for his pro life work there father where can people find you 
if they want to reach out to you? Uh, I'm at uh, RomanCatholicMan.com is my teaching website, but my spiritual warfare website is usgraceforce.com. Go there mm-hmm. and, and join and list. We're bigger than the Coast Guard right now. And so Yeah, that's we're, cool. We're, and and, and Grace Force. We're 75,000 enlisted. And listen into so, the Grace Force podcast. Yeah. This is the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Until next week, may the breath of the Holy Spirit aloha you. Aloha. Thanks for listening to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Find more manly conversation at the Bear Wozniak Deep Adventure YouTube channel. Subscribe and ring the bell. Thank you.